when your attitude is a certain way, you will walk into supernatural blessings. And he shares a promise that I hardly ever hear any preachers preach about. And consequently, we are malnourished and underformed in this area. We get the promises about healing and the promises of prosperity and the promises of property and the promises of Kool-Aid is going to come out your water fountain. If you say Jesus seven times and spin around on one foot and hop up and holler and holler now, holler loud as you can, you're going to get it right now. One, two, three, four, boom. We got all of that. We got all, of, but let me tell you a promise you don't hear. Jesus told his disciples, offenses will come. That's a promise. Offenses will come. If you avoid offenses, you avoid life. Offenses will come. They will come over and over and over and over and over again. They will come. I don't know whether the mail is going to come, but offenses will come. The longer you live, the more things are going to offend you. It is impossible to hide from it. You cannot dodge it. Everywhere you go, you will run into offenses. You must understand that your ability to handle offense will determine your direction for the next 20, 30 years of your life. God will promote you to the level of your tolerance of pain. God will promote you to the level of your tolerance of pain. At the point that you can't handle pain, you lose the promotion. He promotes you to the level of your tolerance of pain. If you can't take it, you can't be promoted. You can't handle it, you're too sensitive, you can't have it. In the corporate world, the people who get the big bucks are paid to handle problems. You can't be an executive and you can't handle stress. You can't be a manager and your feelings are sensitive. You can't run a corporation and you can't handle a problem. We don't put you in a corporate office to overview in the city with glass all around you not to handle problems. We gave you that so that you could process the problem. The big bucks go to problem handlers. People who can solve it. People who can make it happen. People who can get it done. The less you have to be responsible for, the smaller the compensation. The greater you have to deal with, the more they're paying you. They're paying you to deal with problems, issues, and circumstances. And there's nothing worse than putting a little person in a big position. Oh my God, I think I'm going to tweet that myself. There's nothing worse than putting a little person in a big position. They walk around with their chest all stuck out and they're looking important, but they never get anything done. They can't handle anything. They're angry with everybody. They fall out with everybody. They're power tripping because you got a Napoleon spirit and you're not big enough to be able to manage the position that you're in and you end up being a hater to people who get things done because you can't handle what happens has been given unto you. So when you ask for promotion, you're asking for problems. Get that in your head. When you ask for promotions, you're asking for problems. You're asking for offenses. You're asking, fill my desk with offense. I can handle it. I'm the man for the job. I'm here to represent, I can handle it. Let me put it in Bible language. To him whom much is given, much is required. You can't get the much giving if you're not gonna deal with the much required. Let me break it down in colloquialism. New levels, new devils. The higher you go, the more you're gonna have to confront with every day. We must be able to handle these offenses. And when Jesus taught this, they said, okay, how shall I handle this? He said, well, shall I forgive my brother seven times? Jesus said, it has been said unto you, you shall forgive your brother seven times, but I say unto you to forgive him seven times 70. Well, we can multiply seven times 70, but Jesus is not after the answer to the number. He is trying to say, I want you to be perpetually forgiven. As soon as you get offended, throw it off. As soon as you get offended, throw it off. As soon as you get offended, throw it off. As soon as you get offended, throw it off. Don't let anything collect in you or build in you or corrode in you or become toxic in you. Whatever they did and whoever did it is not worth it. It is not worth it to allow your history to abort your destiny, to sabotage your promise, to end in what God said he would do in your life you got to be able to shake it off if you're going to be the disciples you got to shake it off if you're going to be the king you got to shake it off if you're going to be in power you got to be able to shake it off you can't breathe in air and inhale and not exhale you can't have a car that doesn't have an exhaust pipe you can't eat food and not eliminate whatever you do you got to be able to take in and let out and take in and let out and take in and let out and if you stop breathing if you stop taking it in 
in and letting it out, you stop breathing and you die. If you clog up the exhaust pipe, the engine will eventually explode. If you're not able to eliminate, your body is going to pop. The problem is you have a system for elimination in every area except your heart. Your heart is always taking in offense after offense after offense after offense after offense and if you're not careful it will begin to damage your attitude and the person that you used to be that you could have been that you would have been that you were designed to be begins to corrode from the toxicity of the buildup of all the things that have happened to you you are a blessed people we are we are blessed we are created in christ jesus we are created in christ jesus a unique individual there has never been another you there has never ever been another you thousands and thousands and thousands of years there's never been another you there never will be another like another you they can walk like you they can talk like you they can get their hair done like you there will never be another you you are a designer's original uniquely and fearfully and marvelously made in Christ Jesus. You were created by a creator in his likeness and in his image. Because your creator made you in his likeness, you are creative. You are creative. You know you're creative when you can take a little bit of nothing and do something with it. We are creative. Throw us in the woods and we'll make trees in the tables. We are creative. We can take anything and make something out of it. We didn't have all of this equipment years ago. Our grandmamas had washboards and turned over pots and start beating on pots with sticks and we made music I don't care what you put us in we'll turn it into something and make something out of it because we are creative people created in Christ Jesus we are creative until we collect so much offense that we are using all of our energy to manage our pain and all of the energy that could be going toward the abundant life and the progressive life and the promises of God that are in your life that your power is not being used in your destiny because all of your engines are exhausting power maintaining your history forgiveness is not an idea that that alleviates the, the perpetrator of his responsibility it is not about the perpetrator it's about liberating the victim it says you abused me once that was your fault but if I continue to regurgitate it over and over again that's my fault I'm not going to live in where I've been when I have an opportunity to cut the cord between me and you and live in where I'm trying to go forgiveness doesn't mean I agree with you it doesn't mean I think you were right it doesn't mean that you were flawless it just means that I have too much in front of me to allow the things behind me to leave me incarcerated and bound by you and I am not going to wait for you to forgive I'm not going to wait for you to ask for forgiveness you may not ask for forgiveness I can't give you that much power that I put my life on hold waiting on you to come to yourself I'm not gonna wait on it I'm not gonna wait on you to pay me back you may not ever pay me back the money I'm not gonna lose the peace over the money I can get some more money if I got some peace so I'm not gonna give you that much power besides some of the people we need to forgive are dead if you're waiting on them to say, I'm sorry, they'll never be able to do it. But if nobody else cuts you loose, you got to be able to cut yourself loose and say, I'm not going to die right here. I am going to let it go. When Jesus is teaching his disciples how to be blessed, he deals with their attitude. Because your attitude is going to have everything to do with your altitude. Your attitude is going to have everything in the world to do with your altitude. So if I was the devil and I was really trying to stop your progress, terminate your future, I can't stop God from blessing you, but I can get you out of alignment where you don't have the blessed attitude to be able to receive what he has for you. And all of a sudden, you're operating at 50% of the woman you could have been. 30% of the man you would have been had you not been through what you've been through. When you carry it, the toxicity of it begins to poison your soul like cancer. So Jesus says, the art of survival necessitates no matter what I throw on you, no matter what life throws on you, 
Get out of it what you can. <sighs> Exhale what you can and keep it moving. Take in what's good. Throw out what's bad. Keep on moving. Eat the meat. Spit out the bones. Keep on. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I'm going to take you back to your mama's wisdom and your, your grandma's wisdom. You see, really big people don't act small. I've been blessed in my life, born in the hills of West Virginia on the side of a mountain in a little raggedy house that was supported by a four by four posts. We sat out there, we had one floor furnace and all the whole family be standing over top of the furnace trying to stay warm in the winter. I know what it is to come from meager beginnings. I've also been to the tops of the mountains. I've been with the greatest of the great. I've sat with the last three uh, presidents. I've sat with nine heads of state. I've sat with CEO executives, actors and entertainers at the top of their industry, at the top of their career. I've been with the greatest lawyers in this country. If they negotiated deals, navigated closing, and I learned that there is a characteristic amongst great people that other people don't know. Great people can argue in a boardroom. They can fight over a principle. They can slam down desks. They can declare their position. They can argue endlessly and then look at the watch and say, well, Jim, it's 12 o'clock. Let's get something to eat. And I say, you're going to eat with him? You all fought. You cussed each other out. You were yelling and screaming, and now you're going to eat? I was scared to eat. I thought the food would be poison. But they would be laughing and talking because big people don't let petty problems stop them from seeing the greater picture of what they're supposed to do. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. Oh, I wish I had something. See, and when you have been conditioned to think like a chicken, you can't fly like an eagle. You can get the degree like an eagle. You may even get the office and the job like an eagle, but you're going to always mess it up and fall back down from your promotion because you don't have the attitude. You've got the degree, but you don't have the attitude. You're pretty enough to be a wife, but you don't have the attitude. You look like a great woman, but you don't have the attitude. You can't bond with the man you got now because you are still married to the man you had before. As soon as you let go of who you were connected to you can connect to who you got right now you cannot hold on to your history and have your hands out for your destiny help me preach this this morning chickens eat off the ground they eat off the ground they eat in the direction of their vision whatever's on the ground they'll eat it They'll eat sticks, they'll eat corn, they'll eat feces, they'll eat anything. They'll eat their own waste. And the reason they can't fly very high is because of what they eat. You can't eat stuff you should have released and still be able to fly on the level you need to fly. I want to preach to some eagles. Eagles don't eat feces. Eagles don't eat waste. Eagles don't eat out the ground. They fly to the top of the mountain. Are there any eagles in this place? As long as you eat what you should have released, you will never fly on the level you need to fly because you may have an eagle position, but you got a chicken mentality.